So with the shuttle company and the line of work I do, I see a lot of bikes, maintain a lot of bikes, ride a lot of bikes, and thanks to the way my brain works, I seem to have a million ideas of how I can make them better. Whether those ideas are any good or not is up for debate. So in these crazy times, with lockdown keeping me out of the workshop and in the interest of staying sane, I'm challenging myself to design, prototype and hopefully ride all these crazy products that have been bouncing around my head for years. So this is the 48 hour design challenge bike edition. Oh, printing face masks for all those frontline medical staff. So if you hear that thing humming while we do this, this is why. Right, so this whole lockdown thing has given us a whole lot more time to kind of focus on a few different things. So what a great opportunity for me to make these videos that have been in my mind for a while, the stuff that just doesn't get the time that it should do. Uh, essentially what's going to happen is I'm going to take an idea, go right way through the whole process, uh, design, prototype, hopefully even get to ride and then publish everything for you to have afterwards. So what I've done is I've taken a whole, I don't know if you can see that, Anyway, there's my brainstorm. I've taken every single piece of the bike, broken it down, and come up with a whole plethora of ideas around the bicycle. Cool, so the one that I want to start with, the one that jumped out of me out of all of these first off, is what I'm gonna call the hard case. So it's a solid uh, bike bag that fits underneath the seat that fixes to the rails of the seat. Not the seat tube, not my dropper post, it's all kind of integrated, clean, out the way. I have been struggling for a while now to find a, a little bike bag that I'm happy with that works with my dropper seat and with my full suspension bicycle. So this idea has kind of come from that. The plan is, yeah, tucked away, hard, case, simple, mounts to the seat. Let's get cracking. So the first port of call here is to build what I call like a reference sketch. Uh, I took a whole lot of measurements from the seat itself and then built kind of a 3D geometry around what's existing. So obviously the most important bits are the seat rails and then where the seat post touches the seat itself. All the bits that are going to kind of get in the way when I come to model this thing for the final bit. What I'll quickly do now is print off a few test pieces so that I can check and see the fit, check the, I've got all the angles right, I can adjust the model. While that prints, I'm going to have it printing on the smaller printer because this one is busy as you can hear. While that prints, I will do a few sketches, kind of get my head around what this thing's going to actually look like. So it's nothing too crazy here, all I'm doing is stealing the the surfaces of what what's going to be the touch points of this model they will come into come into play later so i just want to make sure that they just absolutely perfect it's easier to make a mistake with a real small test piece like this than print the whole you know whole big model and you realize that your piece is all wrong and out of shape so that's a test piece there Let's see how it fits Oh, perfect. Yeah. Alright, right, so test piece works perfectly. I think what I'm gonna do now is kind of figure out how the, how I fix it to the rails of the seat. Um, was thinking I could use little screws or whatever, but maybe just cable types. You put two little holes and it gets the cable tied up against it, nice and easy. So the design I settled on was kind of like a little bulb that then gets revolved around the axis of the rails. It should give me quite a bit of space to put stuff in but also stay out of the way of the seat post and the, the, the top of the dropper. then cut out what was where the touch points of the rails were and then made the whole thing hollow ready for print. 
this is when I realized that it might be a little bit wide to fit underneath the, the back bits of the seat. You'll see later what I mean here. I should have made these cuts a lot bigger. Lastly, I went in and added what's going to be the little fixing points on the rails and then got everything ready for print. Overnight I got this print done. Um, there's always a few little fit issues that I've got to go over. What I'm going to do with it is I'm actually just going to cut out of this prototype, make it fit, then go into the CAD program and do my cuts accordingly so once I've got the fit happy where I am. It is looking pretty cool. Just, so I can just get the idea. Fits up in there, but what's hitting is the little nut. I've got it in my drawing, I don't know why I didn't even. But anyway. Right. Yeah, crack it. I'm happy with that. Doesn't move. Well, it moves a little bit. But I'm pretty stoked on that. What I'll do is I'll make a little hole so you can adjust the seat through it. And then I'll make these little cuts that I've done to make it fit in there nicely. Uh, probably start another print while I then can use this one to focus on the back door and how that whole mechanism kind of closes and all. Not 100% sure yet, but we'll get there. So jump for last time into Fusion, knocked out a few of those little changes, cut out the little hole for the seat bolts, fixings, trimmed it all up, made the door, job done. Right, so the new one came out beautifully. She's still pretty snug you can see it just touching there but it misses all the important bits and I think we're in for a winner yeah so super happy with that tucks away gets out of the way of the seat post absolutely perfect last little job was to prototype those doors I did end up making a couple of them so that's, that's the first one. It just sat in there. I didn't really have a plan for how it secures and all that would happen is something moves around and it opened up. Now there's this one. You can see the little tabs. And we need a cap tie. So we'll put it through like this. Got kind of a plan here. Yeah, like that. See, I was going to cut this, cut this off. I think what I'm going to do is just have it short. Because once you get it in, there's no real way to get it out. But if you have the little cable, Ooh! and these are the, this is a little bag I was saying. Um, little, little tip. These are great for like photography and for all the bike stuff. Um, if you go to your plumbers. They'll know that they'll have like a million of these every time the uh, every time a tap or anything comes. Every piece has one of these, so they've got heaps. A red little bag, so chuck a few things in. Multi tool, maybe. I don't normally ride with too much. Um, I'm not planning on I'm not planning on carrying a tube or anything like that because the tube of these is like like it's like that big.
back. What about three k's in my ride? To be honest, pretty much forgotten about it. It's quiet. Doesn't bounce around. Gets out of the way when I drop my seat. This thing is red. <laughs> So pretty much, I guess, the underlying question that I have to ask myself with all these little products is, are you going to leave it on your bike? And I think with this one, it's not coming off. <laughs> Well, that's it. This one's done. Um, I had absolute blast making this. Um, get the mind going, I guess, through this isolation. Um, also really enjoyed riding my bike. And now that I've got the perfect little bike bag that I've been dreaming about for the last couple of months. Um, if, you have any, if you have any comments or want to participate in any way, you know, bang down, the, down below in the comments. There's maybe let me know what you would have done differently. Also, what uh, what other stuff really annoys you with your bike that I can maybe try fix, or even any ideas that you have, um, that'll be great. I really want to get you guys involved. So, bang them down below. Um, yeah. Otherwise, uh, we'll see you next time, mate. Eh?